Hi, and welcome to another installment of the Self-Reliant Way to Master Creativity and Productivity. This approach is about turning your inspiration into reality by clarifying your ideas and establishing some focus and launching steps that you can follow through with. And the idea is to create intention in daily life and that our attention from day to day is focused more on activity management. And the idea behind this course is to learn the alignment of our inner world and our outer world so that we can receive and stay connected with and execute creative inspiration and task execution more effectively. Now, any model that covers a broad subject like creativity and productivity while making it scalable. So say from planting a small garden or cleaning the garage to writing a book or growing a business is going to require some significant contemplation and practice. And beyond making you a better artist, musician, or business owner, mastering your own creative process transports you into the realm of achieving more desirable outcomes with everything you do. Now, some questions will be raised, like, how can we remain detached and non-judgmental and learn to follow the energy of our life? Those are lofty ideals, and I know they sound wonderful. But instead of thinking in terms of having made bad decisions, say a judgment about our ability or reasoning, or what should happen, another judgment about control. Instead, we learn to recognize and strive to shift our consciousness towards the idea of simply a change in circumstances. That's following energy versus trying to control the energy of life. Because circumstances constantly alter due to the weather, events out of our control, actions taken by others, our own various interests changing, and the general randomity of life itself. So turning our desires into reality involves structuring our daily life to support their manifestation. And we sense at times the synchronicity of life Everything is working together, it aligns harmoniously, and it goes forward in unison. And a great confidence ensues. But in order to maintain this synchronicity, we must keep our lives, thoughts, and actions well organized, allowing this energetic flow to permeate through everything we do. And the purpose of this course is to help make that possible for you. In the context of the creative process, self-discipline involves training ourselves to function in a controlled and habitual manner. This increases the ability to stay on track with the tasks in front of us. Discipline reveals itself as numerous small tasks done daily. We do them even when we prefer not to or could simply say, I'll do it later or another time. See, we don't get what we don't aim at. And it first takes clarifying our goal to know whether we succeeded or failed at it. We can't manage our goals if we can't measure the progress. So embracing self-discipline is what's going to remove the struggle associated with most activities. And this emotional and energetic tone shifts our overarching mindset towards facilitating the creative process. It's like we turn ourselves over to it. And it's a tone and it reflects neutrality and centeredness and a midline emotional state, whether things are going well or not and we're not too high or too low. It's just a nice even keel. And yeah, we have big moments and depressing moments, but overall, we generate a quiet confidence in simply knowing what's next in a sequence of events. And 
we can stay relatively unattached and we refrain from judging how much we like or don't like any particular task or activity. It's more like it's just the next item. The approach characterizes the outcropping of a larger life philosophy. The creative process involves two fundamental questions when attempting to complete our projects. One concerns the project itself when difficulties are encountered. And that is, what problem am I trying to solve? And the other concerns itself with our process personally, our mindset regarding the project or the activity. And that has to do with what needs of mine am I trying to meet? So we have to stay cognizant of both of these elements when we encounter challenges in performance or in our attitude. And I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the origins of this course emerged from decades of long conversations with my friend Andrew Hinshaw. Andy's abilities uh, combine traditional education with self-learning in many diverse areas, playing the guitar, designing, architecture, oil painting, computer code writing, and business development. Yeah, Andy's a Renaissance man, and he used all the principles in this course and he created success in business, not considered creative or artistic, like the insurance business and the transportation business. And he used the exact same methods that we're going to learn here in this course to draw and design and create oil paintings and master the guitar. And that's an inclusiveness that's very transcending of simply artistic endeavors. In the last video, we discussed how society presents these great mythologies and imaginative folklore surrounding the life of an artist, writer, musician, performer, anything concerning accessing and executing the creative process. Somehow the blank canvas project or page represents this daunting proposition, this mountain to climb, anxieties to overcome, wretched turmoil and inherent dire loneliness. Overcoming the difficulty associated with getting started can cause us to overfocus on the environment and or the need for drugs and alcohol to get in the mood to facilitate the process. But it doesn't have to be that way. See, the struggling artist or creative person who's demonstrating difficulty with ordinary daily activities, it, it really represents urban myths that obfuscate reality. You know, how hard yet how noble the struggle to become creative and be creative. Reminds me of a famous author who uh, assistant found him at the end of the day, his head's down on his desk. And he's like, well, what's wrong? And the author's like, I only got seven words today and I didn't know the order to put them in. So we're all going to have days like that, but they don't have to be months like that or years like that. Because here's the thing, when we're showing up to the page or the canvas or code writing, or project management, whatever it is, the work of the project, we have to recognize the underlying struggles. And that's our ultimate confront. And the real issue with the blank page or the project or any significant aspiration lies in our associated fears. Creating involves serious work requiring skill sets and time on task and the right time on task in particular. And this involves exploring the parameters of our mindset and our attitude relative to whatever project or vision we're cooking up. And other than Van Gogh and Mozart and Da Vinci and people like that, most of us are not going to be creating masterpieces every single day. They were blessed and they applied themselves, but we are not cursed. 
the rest of us. The creative process became second nature for them, but now it's our turn. And even if we don't achieve spectacular results, they can still be rewarding ones. Oh, there's the bell, which can only mean, well, homework assignment. And the question, today's assignment is, what are you showing up for in your life this five minutes? And what are you struggling to show up for in your life? So thanks for watching. I welcome you to like the video and subscribe to our channel, please. And may you enjoy the game of life.